indeed. Welcome in, everyone. Sports Takeover on the air. Week three of the college football season. Week one of the NFL season now in the books. Matt Moscona of After Further Review on ESPN Radio. Shane Dixon of On3.com, the Bengal Tiger, joining me to talk about it all. Guys, it was a historic night in Tiger Stadium in Southern Cross Town to play their first game ever at LSU. And I think it was pretty much all that we could have asked for. Your thoughts on the home opener, Matt? Dynamite job with uh, traffic control as well. <laughs> Took people, uh, you know, roughly two hours to go two miles. To get in and out of the game. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, I thought I loved what LSU did, especially getting up early in the game and mostly pushing the ball to Kayshawn Booty, rolling the pocket. Everything that people sort of complained about coming out of the Florida State game justifiably, they seem to fix early in the game. Yeah, early in the game. Let's talk about it, Shea. A record-setting first quarter for the LSU Tigers. 37 points in that one, making it the most points in a single period in school history. Previous mark, 35. They did it twice back in 77 and 58. <laughs> My gosh, you really have to roll back the clock. Started early, kept it going. What were your thoughts, Shane? I don't think any of these kids were alive. Yet, <laughs> no. Is the point. <laughs> I was barely alive. Uh, I think if Brian Kelly preached all week about starting fast, having a sense of urgency out of the gate, which they lacked in the opener and then made up for in the second half, certainly in the fourth quarter, I loved in this one that not only did they start fast, but they got it done in all three phases. I mean, right out of the gates on special teams, a forced turnover. You're getting stops and forcing turnovers on defense, and obviously you're punching it in on offense. So you couldn't have scripted a first quarter in the first, you know, in those three phases any better. Yeah, no doubt about it. 550 total yards of offense, 320 passing, 230 rushing. The last time mm. LSU had more than 550 was 593 against Ole Miss. In that Look at you, track stat guy. How about that? You know, and you talked about getting it done right from the beginning. One of the things that impressed me was getting. Kayshawn Booty involved right from the beginning. There you see a number of catches for him on the night. A lot of lessons, I guess, learned in that first game that they took into the second. First play, they threw a little five-yard out route to yeah. Kayshawn. They gave him the ball in a jet sweep, a shovel pass. They threw a deep to him. He Nine touchdowns in the game, and Kayshawn didn't have one of them. I would not have had that prop bet, but Malik Neighbors, it was nice to see him bounce back. And I thought maybe the biggest takeaway, too, was Jaden Daniels in complete command. If there was a quarterback competition, it's it's over. I think we all understand that at this point. For this a is, number of reasons. This is Jaden Daniels' job, yes. No doubt about it. Shay, Jaden, pretty pretty efficient, right? I mean, that's I the mean, one thing that Brian Kelly keeps talking about. If he finishes with the completion percentage that he has now, it would be an NCAA record. Even Joe Burrow wasn't touching <laughs> 79%. So he's he is efficient. That's what everyone has said about watching him in the first couple of games. And Brian Kelly said he's doing everything we've asked of him. Now, can he kind of clean up certain parts of his game, sure, but I think we saw what we'll talk about here in a, in a bit. The Jack Besh touchdown was a beautiful, beautiful play. I mean, he could have easily run for 10 yards, but he understood, hey, Looking look. Looking at I'm, it right here. Yeah. Right here. I'm going to stay in the pocket, move my feet. And, and an accurate open. throw on the run. Yeah. I mean, everything that you want. the gritty. 10, 10 of 11 for 137 yards, three scores, and the rushing touchdown. And, and you guys mentioned it before. If ever there was a quarterback competition, it has been erased, in part because of what Jaden Daniels is doing, but in part also because of what Garrett Nussmeyer is doing. I mean, that was, that was two really bad interceptions. And it could have been four interceptions in the ball game. Um, listen, you don't want to, after a performance like that, you don't want to, like, search for the negative, but I would actually look at it as a positive. You're not, you, now you know you're not going through this season with any type of possibility of a two-quarterback system, a controversy, is this guy going in? Had Daniels not played well and Nussmeyer played well, yeah. then maybe you do have that question, if the offense is sputtering, do you make the change? That's off the table now. Garrett Nussmeyer, the M.O. was he doesn't protect the football. He's the gunslinger. Well, we saw that, and that to the detriment of the team, and you can't do that and expect to win SEC games. Daniels has just been too good. The Nuss bus is parked for the moment. And I think he's going to be a great I, yeah. I yeah. still have a lot of faith in Garrett Nussmeyer, but it's very evident that one guy has started 31 games yeah. and the other guy is playing hero ball when he gets out there, almost as if in his mind it's, this is my only chance right now, and I need to make the most of it, and that's the result. It's almost like you and Brian Kelly share the same mind. You never want to have a moment where you, you turn the ball over. Obviously, we had a conversation with that. He's got to take care of the football, and he knows that. I mean, that's not anything that's um, something that he, he feels good about. But um, he did some really good things, and, and we have to build off of that. And uh, I think he is somebody that when, you, when you're in that 
number two position. I'm not here to make excuses for him. You press a little bit, right? You want to, you know, you have another quarterback who's led eight consecutive touchdown drives. You're trying to press. You want to get on the field, and and he doesn't need to do that. We have great confidence in him. He just needs to let the game come to him. Shay, I mean, you just said it. Yeah, definitely pressing, trying to show that he belongs. Just patience, your time will come, Grasshopper. 100%. And I, that interception he just he threw right there on the sidelines, that's on the level of last year at UCLA when Max Johnson threw it backwards in the middle of a game. <laughs> like, that's, you just can't be trusted to go out there and do that, even if you're up 70 to nothing in a game. Like, they're putting you out there to see you operate the offense as if this were first, you know, first team experience in a game that matters. And he's not there yet, and that's fine. But as Matt said, at least we now know, right. and no one's going to talk about it anymore. And trust, I think, is the right word that you had there. It's about building the trust, maintaining that trust. Jaden Daniels doing all the right things. Hey, when we return, we're talking about the Tiger offensive line. Some changes there, how they worked out, and if they're here to stay, that's next. Buenos dias. Estoy bien. Gracias. After decades of duplicating, we're going digital, providing our customers with the latest technology and exceptional customer service. Before, you know, years ago, we just simply used um, a copy machine to copy, but now we're able to copy and print and scan and email, and that just, and with one machine, that makes everything easier. Not only do they sell the product and guarantee it, they back it up and they service that product. Call us now for all of your digital office products. BRDP, experience no one can copy. At Neighbors Federal Credit Union, we're here to help our community. We're here to support the local students stepping into their futures. Here to assist in getting you on the right financial path. Neighbors is here to support the local charities that serve our community. And we're here for the local businesses that make our community thrive. At Neighbors Federal Credit Union, we're here for you. At Pearl Dental Group, whether you come in for a routine cleaning or a complete smile makeover, our experienced team will take the time to listen to your needs and provide trusted solutions. From Invisalign to dental implants, we can take care of most dental needs. Ask about sedation dentistry and have all of your work completed while you relax in comfort. Our interest-free payment plans allow you to get the care you need now, and your first exam is free. Hi, I'm Dr. Andre Bruni. And I'm Dr. Jessica Bruni. Come experience the Pearl Dental difference. We look forward to meeting you. These days, it's hard to sell that old car, boat, or RV. Save yourself the hassle and get a tax break as well. Donate your car or boat to St. Vincent de Paul and help a charity that's been helping Baton Rouge for over 150 years. Now more than ever, St. Vincent de Paul needs your help. You are watching News 2 at 630 on WBRZ+. Plus. Well, sports takeover edition of that talking LSU Southern football. Matt Moscone and Shea Dixon joining me right now. And guys, some of the changes, that's really, I think, the theme from game one to game two that LSU implemented. Love to see them, especially on the offensive line. I was a little concerned, not going to lie, that they weren't going to make any changes. Shea, we'll talk about it with you first. I mean, I, I like there, there is no hesitancy to, to try out different combinations. This is the time to do it. We've seen in years past, LSU's gone five games deep before changing up different offensive lines. So this is commonplace. Oh, I mean, get injured more than anybody on the team, obviously. So it's good to figure out who your backups are. And we can get into the nuances of all the shifts and what it means. And I'll, I'll let the Catholic high grad on stage. <laughs> the former offensive comment, lineman. Yeah, but we'll let him talk about I've it. been screaming this all off season. Will Campbell and Emory Jones are different. They are just on another level from what they normally recruit. And we heard Brian Kelly say it, Matt. Emory Jones is knocking on the door. Maybe the highlight of the second half was the pancake block Ooh. Emory Jones had around the goal line where he pushed the guy about 20 yards. Physically, undeniably, he's ready, same like Will Campbell. The tricky part is do you want two true freshmen starting when you get the conference play? There's Emory right there, 50. I mean, he, fill, he fills out the uniform. And, yeah. he's, he, and he can play guard or tackle. For me, the biggest thing, though, Charles Turner bumping into center, you did have a couple of false start penalties that were basically snap infractions where half the line moved and he didn't. That's the downside of not having gotten all of those reps throughout camp. Yeah, and I think it's coming to your point, but I do like that they give Dellinger, slide him over to Campbell's side and really get a little bit of veteran and youth together there to play together. You know, I, I feel like it's, it's a work in progress, and Brian Kelly said as much this week. 
But I, I, I feel pretty confident to, to tell you here today that the way it graded out was what we were hoping for and there's still going to need be a need to rotate guys in cam wire still going to have to play for us trey munch Schwartz still going to have to play for us there's still going to have to be rotations within this group it's not five for the whole game how much do you expect Go ahead. yeah the, the, what that, that also change. illustrates though is that brian kelly is still getting to know his roster the fact that you're into two games you had a spring and fall camp and you're still having not just like a guy who maybe is rotating in at the second team right tackle. You change three different positions on your offensive line, game one to game two. That is massive turnover, and he's saying they're not done. I think Brian Kelly, like it goes, it's another illustration of just how much turnover there was and how much of a rebuild he has trying to figure out his roster. Yeah, and there's definitely that feeling out process, and I think you're seeing that in the run game as well. Now, it should change this week. We're expecting John Emery to come back, but the Tigers did have some pretty good success on the ground when needed to. Of course, it is the competition. I mean, this was really the highlight from scrimmage in the run game, but Ooh. LSU, as you talked about, Matt, needing to find that identity with the offensive line because they're going to need these ground yards. Yeah, Will right. Campbell tackled Armani Goodwin on that play. <laughs> yeah, but this is something that, that very much is a work in progress, Shay. Oh, 100%. And, and Brian Kelly has said it now after two games. He doesn't have the sample size yet to know if the run game is there or if it's not, right? And But I think that changes. And he said it with John Emery. I mean, John Emery was a five-star, the number one rated running back coming out of high school for a reason. Now, have we seen him completely live up to that at LSU? No. But he also just sat out his entire junior year. Yeah. That's your money year. And he hasn't played since 2020, which is why Brian Kelly said, hey, Put the pause button on him for a second and see how he looks. He's worked hard to get back into this position, um, and now he gets an opportunity. Now, let's, let's be careful. Now, he's, he's been off for a while. So to put a lot of expectations on him in the first game, we certainly can't do that. You know, we've got other backs that have done really well, um, but he will be part of the mix. And make no mistake about it, we've seen his capabilities in camp. Uh, we've kept him active within our rotation. So uh, he's ready to play, uh, and we did that with, you know, obviously, Obviously, our, our mind eyes toward the SEC competition coming up, so we're excited to get him back. I mean, if anybody is fresh, it's going to be John Emery, right? Uh, what are you expecting to see in this one, Matt? Or Shay, you want to yeah, start? Yeah, I'm, I'm not. Uh, Brian Kelly's telling me to be patient, and I understand it, but I'm not going to be patient because I think John Emery is the real deal, and I think he's the best running back in the room, and I see no reason why he isn't playing right out of the gates. And remember, he didn't tear his ACL a year ago. He's been healthy the yeah, whole time. You're right. That's a good point. The best running back in the history of LSU football is Leonard Fournette, physically. Can we all agree? There's sure. never been a guy like Leonard. What happened when Leonard went up against Alabama in 2015? Shut him down. I don't care how good of a back you are. If you can't block, it don't matter. And I don't think this offensive line can block. For them to run the football, they are going to have to get creative and get to the edges. I think John Emery is not going to ever consistently have like an 18 carries for a 122 game. But he may bust the 60-yarder because he's as special as Shea said. That's what you're looking out for. You're looking for breakdowns, busted plays, big-time plays, chunk plays. But if you think they're going to establish a consistent running game behind this offensive line, I don't see it. Well, that's why I think what John Emery brings is a little bit of the receiving game in the run game. So I, I expect him to, to really flare out, be on wheel routes, those kinds of things. Now, we he haven't hasn't really shown, seen that yet. Hasn't shown the best hands in the world in practice. Interestingly, Emery, this is a... Quick anecdote, Emory had eye surgery two years ago. He kind of had like a lazy eye, and we were supposed to see, because they thought that might help him in the receiving game. We are supposed to see it last year, and obviously he didn't play a year ago because he was suspended. But how Emory may come along in the passing game is interesting. Like they've sort of, they think they've addressed that with his vision. Was that the Dwayne Bow route? Was that? But yeah, well, and actually they, Dr. Blake Williamson helped, yeah, did both their surgeries, yeah. Good deal. Matt, also a, a client, I believe, huh? I just had my four-year LASIK anniversary. I, I'm, yeah. Happy anniversary. All right. When we come back, we've got our eye on Mississippi State. That's coming up next after this. It's getting hot at Sarita's Grill and Cantina. Ignite your taste buds with our flaming fajitas, featuring top-quality meats and mouth-watering veggies. Our Latin flair takes our dishes to a whole new level. Caliente, Sarita's Grill and Cantina, Bass Pro Boulevard. Bear Creek. Western store, it's where the West begins. Saddle up, boys and girls. This is where the West begins. Bear Creek has everything you need to tame the West. Boots, hats, saddles, and jewelry. 
It's a one-stop Western shop for men, women, and children at Bear Creek. New merchandise arrives daily. Bear Creek Western Store, it's where the West begins. Are you in need of a new roof? Walker Metals has you covered. Stop by and meet the experts at Walker Metals and let them customize a new metal roof for your home. Walker Metals manufactures 26 and 29 gauge panels. Choose your color from a large selection of Gavalume Plus. Metal roofing is durable, weather resistant, and energy efficient. Walker Metals sells direct to homeowners, roofing installers, and contractors. If you're in the market for a new roof or metal building, call Walker Metals at 225-791-7791. Walker Metals located just off Florida Boulevard in Walker. Walker Metals is Louisiana manufactured, Louisiana proud. Settling for half-speed internet at your business? You wouldn't settle for half a delivery or get fitted for half a suit. How about half of a haircut? Don't settle. Get full speed up and full speed down from a local company with local service. It's Symmetrical Speed Internet from Rev. Getting connected is a piece of cake. And for a limited time, get three months free and 30% off for the next three months. Run your business at full speed with Rev. We take our margaritas seriously with 14 different flavors. Passion fruit, mango, fresh squeeze, and single barrel select tequila for our specialty margaritas. You can't get margaritas like this anywhere else. Sarita's Grill and Cantina, Bass Pro Boulevard. You are watching News 2 at 6.30 on WBRZ+. Hey, welcome back, everyone. Michael Cobble in with Matt Moscona, Shay Dixon, a little sports takeover, and we're turning our attention now to SEC play. LSU, one and one on the year, getting things started with Mississippi State here in Death Valley on Saturday evening, a five o'clock kick. So if you thought traffic was bad last week, you might want to get a little bit earlier. I don't expect it to be as rough as it was against Southern, but State kind of uh, impressive so far, at least in the early goings of this season. And it's something that I think has been building, right, for Mike Leach and company to this point. Winners over Arizona this past weekend out in the desert. And what struck me, Matt, we'll start with you, is just Will Rogers really the command of this offense. You're going to see some film here where they use their passing game like their running game. It is short yardage. It is, you know, third down. This is second and two, and they're throwing it here. So just some things a little bit differently, but finally maybe up and running for Mike Leach. This offense is completely predicated on timing, tempo, and efficiency. The fact that Leach came in the COVID year was a massive disadvantage. They didn't have spring. They had a minimal fall camp. Now he's got Will Rogers, who is a legit NFL prospect. What they don't have is the dynamic weapons on the outside, but they run that offense efficiently enough with a, a, a veteran starting quarterback who is an NFL caliber talent where they're going to move the football on, on everybody they play. You just have to tackle them. Shay, I'll be honest, when State came and Mike Leach came to Starkville, I didn't think that the air raid would work in the SEC. It has yet to get up and running, but the way Will Rogers throws into these tight windows, it's got me believing a little bit more here, at least this year. And as Matt said, it was <clears throat> excuse me, tough coming in during that COVID year. And you say it was tough doing the air raid in the SEC. That didn't seem to matter in the opener for Mike Leach right. down here at Tiger Stadium when they ran LSU out of the <laughs> well, building. I blame LSU both Bo 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 I blame both of them. LSU fans yeah. know that this Mississippi State team can beat them, and it's for the exact reason that Brian Kelly said. He likened it to a triple option offense. He says, there's only about four or five things they're going to do on every play. But if you're not sound enough to stop all four or five of those things, they're going to pick the one you're not doing every single time and make you pay for it. And I want to step aside here from even that, from defending the air raid, from having to be technically sound. State returns more starters on offense and more starters on defense than any team Mike, has, Mike Leach has had in the three years there. He's got a good D.C. in our net who LSU wanted and didn't get at the time. They're settled in. This is a program that is already further along, a lot like Arkansas in my mind, yeah. of where they want to be compared to where LSU is right now in the Brian Kelly team. The strange thing about this game, too, LSU opened up about a field goal favorite. The line moved five points overnight. To Mississippi State now being a two-point favorite. Yeah. Tells you where the public's and, and professional sentiment is with this game. Well, it's just like Shea said, different levels of preparation of where they are. And that's what Coach Kelly talked about to Shea's point, is you just don't have enough time to get ready for what they do in your short window of work. There's maybe four or five, six concepts that are run so well and so efficiently that if you get too cute on defense, that's where you get exposed. Or you try to do one thing to take it away. If you play too much man, if you play too much three-man rush, if you try to be one-dimensional defensively, that's where you get in trouble. So this is really about trying to change up your looks, try to make it so they don't see the same thing every time. Um, but they're going to run what they run. 
and they just run it better, then you can defend it in three days of preparation. And that speaks to that triple option attack that you referenced, Shay. Here's the tail of the tape on the two teams. Clearly, Mississippi State throws it more than LSU. They don't run it as much. They use that passing game like their ground game. Both teams scoring 44 points per game. That was interesting to me. But the third down efficiency, we already seen LSU struggle with that to some degree defensively against Florida State getting off the field. The rush defense, now again, if LSU can find some success on the ground there, uh, state is pretty stout as far as stopping the run. So it's up, up you know, to this LSU defense really to handle the assignment. And I will say, I thought the defense played well, missing Ali Gay for the first half and then missing B.J. Ogilary for the entire game. I think B.J. is expected to be back. He was telling me it was just a slight thing that they're more concerned about just protecting him and they didn't need him in this contest. But I got to say, guys, Savion Jones was all over the place early in this one. We have some video of, of the defensive effort in this contest against Southern, and they were making plays in the back. Of, again, it's the competition, so you kind of do have to you know, take it for a grain of salt. But Micah Baskerville also with a big night. Baskerville's got to be on the field for 90% of your defensive snaps. Uh, I know we're going to talk about him a bit more, but I did love to see Savion Jones and Desmond Little. On Baskerville's pick six, it was Little who had the tip ball that Baskerville intercepted. Um, Little was all over the field, which was fantastic to see because you're building depth at those spots. You know what you have with Ollie Gay and B.J. Ojolari, but to see Savion Jones and Desmond Little in particular play the way they did against Southern, it showed they, they can elevate their game when they need to, and, and that can give you valuable depth, which you're going to need in the SEC. I think that third down statistic is one that we're going to have to look at after the game because at Florida State, it got them into a hole that obviously led to a loss, right? I mean, it, it kept them all on the field at Florida State where LSU just couldn't seem to find an answer. Mississippi State doesn't want to explosive play you to death. They are going to just keep moving the chains yeah. and moving the chains, and you've got to get off the field on third down. I'll note, here's something I'm watching if I'm an LSU fan. They moved Jay Ward down to nickel, and they moved Greg Brooks to safety. So basically flipped two guys. Seven Banks, it sounds like the Ohio State transfer, might play his first game this weekend. For me, guys, that's huge. Not just the Banks, but the movement of the pieces on defense. It, it lets me know that Matt House is starting to get a real feel for what he's got in the secondary and how he wants to use them. And this is the big game. We find out how good the secondary is. And that coverage in space will be critical tying those pieces together. And Baskerville was one of those guys that gives you a look that can cover more of the field. Coach Kelly talked about him. Uh, this week and how important it is to have a guy like that out on the field. He's got a unique skill set. He is really good in pass coverage. He's really smart. Um, that doesn't mean he can't stop the run. Um, he's not built to be a big time plugger, but he'll stick his nose in there. He's he's not afraid. We saw that. His his block punt was like teach tape. I mean, it was awesome. I mean, he bent, put the low hand out, took the ball off the foot of the punter. Some younger players would have run into the punter in that situation. So he's, he's a smart, savvy football player and makes us better when he's on the field. All right, guys, it is LSU and Mississippi State coming up uh, from Tiger Stadium. Five o'clock kick in this one. And, of course, the Southern Jaguars in action as well on taking on Texas Southern. There's the LSU State game. And then uh, Southern on the road taking on Texas Southern in Arlington for their third game of the year. Hey, Matt, uh, that's going to do it for your time on the show. Thanks for joining us. When we come back, though, we're talking recruiting with Shay Dixon. LSU with some good visitors this past weekend. We'll break it down next after this. Between the songs and stories, the crisp evening air and the crackling fire are moments like these. Traditions that warm the glow in all of us. Share your traditions. Visit jimsfirearms.net. Ah, summer is here. Now's the perfect time to enjoy your amazing back yard. Unless you have a mosquito problem, contact the experts at J&J &J Exterminating. Whether you need a one-time treatment or a monthly control program, call us or go online for a free estimate from a fully certified technician. And take advantage of $50 off initial service. Make this summer the best ever with J&J &J Exterminating. J&J &J Exterminating. Yeah. You know how far I'm going. At the Baton Rouge Clinic, our sole focus is to provide exceptional health care for your entire family so that you can get back to doing what you love most. We are caring for generations. You give me love. Give me love. 
Honesty, integrity, attention to detail, and dedication. Lewis Mechanical Contractors has been providing top quality plumbing services to Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas since 1960. Your peace of mind was their business then, and it is still now. Whatever you need, repair, installation, replacement, Lewis Mechanical is the area's trusted source for all plumbing jobs, big and small. Call 927-6520. That's 927-6520. Lewis Mechanical, keep it plumbing, plumbing. Between the songs and stories, the crisp evening air, and the crackling fire are moments like these. Traditions that warm the glow in all of us. Share your traditions. Visit jimsfirearms.net. You are watching News 2 at 6.30 on WBRZ+. Welcome back, everyone. Shay Dixon joining me now to talk recruiting. Shay with On3.com, the Bengal Tigers. Let's, I guess, get the reaction from the LSU Tiger first home game. I know that's what you guys have popping on your site right now. Yeah, look, I mean, it couldn't have gotten much better when you're talking about a home game, uh, the environment, sellout crowd, playing Southern, and a lot of guys, JV Toviano being one of them, there he is right there, Michael Cobble and the camera work. The guy you're seeing is a top five defensive back in the country there on the right, the Joe Burrow jersey from Texas, being recruited by A&M in Texas, skipped the game in Austin to come to the LSU Southern game. That's so pretty big. there were a lot of guys out there that certainly LSU is after and, and wanted to come, have come in. Colin Simmons being one of them, another defensive lineman out of the Lone Star State. You see Brian Kelly before games. This is what you'll see if you look down on the field. They're getting through warm-ups. He'll kind of handshake and hang out with the recruits, and uh, then the personnel team sort of takes it from there. But... <laughs> For a non-conference game, Cobble, I haven't seen a visitor list as impressive they ha as they've had, right? It's typically a handful of guys, maybe some local guys. They had a lot of big-time visitors in this weekend. And the guys, you know, that you'd expect to be there, I saw Caleb on the sidelines uh, in a boot, Caleb, uh, you know, from Liberty High. So, you know, to get those guys in from Texas and to get Toviano, like you said, to come in on a big, what was a huge, pretty big game for A&M, uh, that speaks, I should say Texas, that speaks uh, volumes. I think, Not right? a big game for A&M. No, a rough game for A&M. I'm glad he wasn't there. <laughs> I <clears throat> wish he was there, actually. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I think that, and look, when you've recruited like they have in Baton Rouge, and I think that's important too, and in Louisiana, you've got Caleb Jackson, you've got Kylan Jackson, you've got Shelton Sampson, you've got Ricky Collins, you've got kids sort of all over the city, from Zachary to, to Liberty Magnet to Woodlawn, uh, and Catholic, obviously, that allows them to have them around all the time. And when you've got those guys around all the time, they start to help you recruit other guys. And yeah. then the New Orleans kids, everyone's driving in. So this is a concerted effort to build the recruiting class. Good stuff. We'll be back with more, and you can get Shea on 3.com. Thanks for joining us for this Sports Takeover.